Welcome to the Hand in Hand with God YouTube channel, where the sermons are filled with the Word of God, so you can apply God's truth to your life as you glean them from the teachings that are brought to you by myself, Pastor Daryl Clausen, but more importantly, they're brought to you by the Holy Spirit. Apply God's truth to your life so that He can mold you and shape you into who He wants you to be so that you can shine bright for Him through your words and actions. God bless you as you watch the video. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Hand in Hand with God, a flowing fountain lifestyle, a time where we gather together in a corporate setting to learn more about God, and apply His Word to our lives. My name is Daryl Clawson, and I'll be sharing the Word of God with you today. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank You for Your Word, Lord. Father, Your Word both being Jesus and the written Word, Father. Thank You, God, that we can read Your Word and the Holy Spirit will work with us to apply it to our lives. So, Father God, as we delve into Your Word, I pray, Lord, that each of us has chosen to have a heart open to your word, to receive from you what you want to say to us, God, and that each of us would work with the Holy Spirit to have your word transform us and renew our minds so that we will know what your good, perfect, and pleasing will is, Father. And Lord, as I give this message, I pray that I would be attentive to the Holy Spirit and say what you want me to say, Father. We thank you and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today's sermon is entitled, What God Says Goes. Obedience to God is vitally important to your life. Of all of the biblical characters who were obedient to God, the two that we are going to look at today are Noah and Moses. Let's first look at Genesis 6, verse 22, which says, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Noah was told by God to build an ark because it was going to rain, and that rain was going to wipe out everything that lived on the land and the birds of the air. Noah obeyed God and built the ark to God's specifications. Let's take a look at the setting in which Noah lived and what God asked Noah to do. The record of this is in Genesis 6, verses 11 to 22. Genesis 6, verses 11 to 22. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and, behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and, behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Verse 15. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, and the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, to bring a flood of waters upon the earth, to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. From under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, Two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. 
of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And thou shalt take unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. That was the story of Noah. And now we're going to look at Moses. The passage that we're going to use when we're looking at Moses is Exodus 40, verses 1 to 16. However, first, let's look at Exodus 40, verse 16. Exodus 40, verse 16 says, Thus did Moses according to all that the Lord commanded him, so did he. Just as Noah did what God told him to do, Moses also followed God's instructions. God had given Moses instructions to anoint Aaron and his sons to be priests over Israel. And Moses followed God's instructions and did what God told him to do. Just as Noah did what God told him to do, Moses also followed God's instructions. God had given Moses instructions to anoint Aaron and his sons to be the priests over Israel. And Moses followed God's instructions and did what God told him to do. If we were to read both the books of Leviticus and Numbers, we would see that God would tell the Israelites to do something through Moses, and the Israelites would obey what God said. Thus the Israelites obeyed God. This comes from when God first met with the Israelites at Mount Sinai, and the Israelites were afraid to hear the voice of God. So they said to Moses that he should communicate with God, and then tell them God's instructions for the Israelites. And the Israelites said that in communicating this way, they would obey God's instructions. Talk about having a real man. God wanted to talk to the Israelites directly, but the Israelites were too afraid of God's voice. So they made Moses be their middleman between them and God, instead of taking the opportunity to hear God directly. It is a good thing that Moses said what God told him to say to the Israelites, because if he had changed God's words, the Israelites and Moses would have been in big trouble. We will take a look and see what God told Moses to do here in Exodus 40, verses 1 to 16. Exodus 40, verses 1 to 16, starting with verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation, and thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony, and cover the ark with the veil. And thou shalt bring in the table, and set it in order, the things that are to be set in order upon it. And thou shalt bring in the candlestick, and light the lamps thereof. And thou shalt set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony, and put the hanging of the door to the tabernacle. And thou shalt set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. And thou shalt set the laver between the tent of the congregation and the altar, and shalt put water therein. And thou shalt set up the court round about, and hang up the hanging at the court gate. And thou shalt take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle, and all that is therein. And thou shalt hallow it, and all the vessels thereof, and it shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint the altar of the burnt offering, and all his vessels, and sanctify the altar, and it shall be an altar most holy. And thou shalt anoint the laver and his foot, and sanctify it. And thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and wash them with water. And thou shalt put upon Aaron 
the holy garments and anoint him and sanctify him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt bring his sons and clothe them with coats. Verse 15. And thou shalt anoint them as thou didst anoint their father, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. For their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. And verse 16. Thus did Moses according to all that the Lord had commanded him. So did he. Noah and Moses were both given tasks from God to accomplish. In Noah's situation, God was going to punish the world for the sin of mankind by wiping out all of his creation except for Noah, his family, and the animals that lived in the water and were on the ark, and Noah and his family. In Noah's situation, God was going to punish the world for the sins of mankind by wiping out all of his creation except for Noah, his family, and the animals that lived in the water and were on the ark with Noah and his family. God told Noah the dimensions of the ark and Noah was to take with him two of every type of animal, a male and a female so that they could procreate after the flood. Noah took God's instructions and obeyed them. If Noah had not obeyed God's instructions that we read in Genesis 6 verses 11 to 22, we would not be here today because it was only what was on the ark with Noah and his family that survived the flood. Everything else died. Moses also obeyed God's instructions. God had delivered the Israelites from the land of Egypt, and it was now time for the Israelites to set up the tabernacle. But in order to do so, they needed people who were set apart by God and chosen by God to be God's priests for them. God had chosen Aaron and his sons, which also included their male descendants, to be the priests. Therefore, Aaron and his sons had to be anointed to take on that responsibility for the Israelites. God gave Moses instructions on how to accomplish this, and Moses followed God's instructions, therefore making it possible for the Israelites to have priests who would offer their sacrifices to God. As we can see, the tasks that God gave to both Noah and Moses were important. If Noah had not obeyed God, then all of God's creation would have been wiped out, except for, I guess, the animals that lived in water. The instructions that God gave to Moses were vitally important because without those instructions, the Israelites would not have had Aaron, his sons, and their male descendants to give them spiritual guidance and direction. When we look at the stories of both Noah and Moses, we see that both of them had to have faith to believe that God was asking them to do something, and that what God was asking them to do was important for them to follow through on. Now let's go to the New Testament and look at Hebrews 11, verse 6. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith comes into play every time God asks us to do something. Both Noah and Moses had been chosen by God to do something, and they had to believe that it was important for them to obey God and to do what God was asking them to do. Noah was the only one left on earth who God deemed righteous. Therefore, he was chosen by God to extend the generations of the human race and allow the land and air animals to reproduce. God told Noah that it was going to rain. However, 
Earth's climate was such that it had never rained before, simply because it didn't have to, not because it was in a state of continuous drought. Therefore, it took faith for Noah to believe that it was going to rain. If Noah did not believe that God was going to make it rain, then he would not have built the ark to save his family and the animals. In Moses' situation, he was also chosen by God for a specific task. God chose Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Now that he had done just that, it was time for the Israelites to be set up for their future generations. As Moses continues to be the leader of the Israelites, he has to set up his brother Aaron and Aaron's sons to be able to spiritually lead the Israelites. Moses also needed faith to do what God asked him to do because he needed to believe that God had asked him to choose Aaron. As we can see here, in order for Noah and Moses to do what God asked them to do, they both needed faith. However, their faith was applied differently because they had different tasks. Both Noah and Moses had to believe that God had future generations planned, Noah for humankind in general, and Moses for the Israelites. Noah had to believe that God was going to send a flood even though it had never rained before, and that God had chosen him to carry on the human race. Moses, on the other hand, had to believe that the lineage of the Israelites would continue. Therefore, the future generations would need spiritual guidance just as much as the current generation did, and that it was through Aaron's lineage that God would provide this. From my perspective, I would say that Noah obeying God and building the ark was a larger step of faith than Moses obeying God in the anointing of Aaron and his sons to be priests. Regardless of how much faith was needed for either Noah or Moses to obey God, they still needed faith. They still needed to believe that God exists and that God rewards people who diligently seek Him. If Noah or Moses did not believe that God exists, then there would be no need for Noah to build the ark because there would be no sovereign God to send a flood because of mankind's sins. And if Moses didn't believe in God's existence, then there would be no need for him to anoint Aaron and his sons to be the priests because then there would be no need for the Israelites to have spiritual guidance and leadership throughout their generations. The good news is that both Noah and Moses had a relationship with God. Therefore, not only did they know that God exists, but they also learned through their relationship with God that God rewards people who diligently seek Him. Since both Noah and Moses would have been able to testify that God rewards people who pursue a deeper relationship with Him. They would have been encouraged to obey God and do what He asked them to do. In conclusion, we are no different than Noah and Moses. We must have faith to obey God when He asks us to do something. Anyone can testify that God exists simply by looking at creation. But for those of us who have a relationship with God through Christ Jesus, we can testify that God exists because of what He has done in our lives. Sometimes things that God asks us to do doesn't require much faith to do it, but we must still do it. Moses may have logically thought, yeah, I'll anoint Aaron and his sons as priests because of the promises that God gave to Abraham Isaac and Jacob. It makes sense that the descendants of Jacob will continue for many years. Therefore, they will need someone to act as a priest throughout those generations. And God told me to anoint Aaron and his sons to be the priests for the Israelites 
throughout their generations. Therefore, that is what I'm going to do. Even though Moses may have logically concluded that it made sense to follow through with God's instructions, he still needed faith in God to see the task through to completion. Noah was asked by God to build an ark so that animals and people would survive God's disciplinary action against humanity, which was going to take down creation with it as well. By faith, Noah built the ark that God told him to build because he believed that God's word was true. And since God said that he was going to make it rain, even though it had never rained before, and the entire earth was going to be flooded, then it was in Noah's best interest to obey God and build the ark. In your relationship with God, if you do not have faith in God, you will not please God, simply because if you do not have faith, you will not obey God. If you do not believe that God exists, then you cannot believe that God told you to do something. Because if you do believe that God told you to do something, but you don't believe that He exists, then in my opinion, that would be grounds to send you to the psych ward. If you do not believe that God rewards those who diligently seek Him, which are the people who are pursuing a deeper relationship with Him, then there is no reason to obey God, because there is no benefit for yourself. Therefore, in order to obey God, you must believe that it is in your best interest to obey Him, which would mean that you believe that He will reward you as you pursue a deeper relationship with Him. As you live your life with your relationship with God, prioritized as a number one priority in your life. Obey what God tells you to do by faith, regardless of how much faith it may seem to take to finish the task that God has asked you to do. Let's pray. In this prayer, there's an opportunity to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, and we'll talk to God about Him helping us and re-choosing to surrender to Him so that we can be obedient to what He asks us to do. I invite you to pray this corporate prayer with me. The words will be on the screen. Let's pray. Father God, Almighty King, glory to Your holy name. You are holy and just in all Your ways. I worship You, Father God, because You are the Creator of the universe. You created me in Your image and are worthy of all glory, honor, and power. Lord God, I confess that I have sinned against you, and I ask, Father God, that you forgive me of all my sins, because I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son, who died for my sins, and whom you raised from the dead. Father God, I surrender my life to you, making Jesus the Lord of my life. And I ask that you would fill and baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would forgive me for when I have been disobedient to your instructions, therefore disobedient to you. Father God, as I read your word, I find a plethora of examples of your people who obeyed you. And because of their obedience, you did wonderful things through their lives for the benefit of your kingdom and humankind. Father in heaven, I understand that for me to have the same sort of impact in your kingdom and on humanity, I need to be obedient to what you ask me to do. Therefore, God, I ask that you would help me to be obedient to what you ask me to do so that I would do everything that you ask of me in the manner that you want it done. I ask this in Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll close with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your hand upon our lives. God, we thank you for the relationship that we have with you through Christ Jesus, Father. As we have 
confessed our sins and asked him to be our Savior and Lord. Father God, we thank you for your word and the examples of your people throughout the generations who have obeyed you and that your word tells us the end result of their obedience. Father, I pray that each and every one of us chooses to obey what you ask us to do, Father God, so that we will fulfill the destiny that you have for us and that we will impact the lives of those whom you want us to impact, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you would develop within each of us a tight, close relationship with you, Father God, so that we would be attentive to the Holy Spirit and obey the Holy Spirit when you tell us to do something, Father. Lord God, as we go about our lives, I pray, Lord, that you keep each of us safe and bring us back safely next week, Father God. We thank you for your loving kindness that you have bestowed upon our lives. And I pray, Lord, that your favor would be evident in each of our lives, Father God. We thank you and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. The passage of scripture I'd like to leave with you is Acts 15, verses 8 to 9, which says, And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Throughout the ages, God has given to people the Holy Spirit, those who have believed that Jesus Christ is his Son, who died for their sins, and whom God raised from the dead. This is the basis for salvation. It doesn't matter the sins that you have been caught up in. It does not matter your race, lineage, or the sins of your forefathers. You do not have to attempt to stop sinning before God will forgive you of your sins. You are purified by your faith, and through Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. It's that simple. Thank you for choosing to watch this video. God bless you as you apply his word to your life and work with the Holy Spirit to live a life that's pleasing to God. God bless you. We love you in the name of Jesus Christ. So long. God bless you. Go with God and no one else. Thanks for watching.